Okay, hello everybody. Uh, I'm Marco Valenta, and I'm going to be uh, sort of mediating the conversation here. <coughs> and uh, let me just tell you a little bit of what sort of the, the uh, program looks like. Uh, I'll start off with two short biographies of our uh, two speakers, of our discussants. Uh, then uh, I'll start off with my first question, but we'll be sort of getting in the direction as we get going with our conversation. It'll be about 3.30. There's a chance at that time that we'll get a phone call, a video call, uh, from Baghdad, uh, where uh, one of Joseph's uh, installations that is a part of the larger project that I'll tell you a little, tiny little bit about, mm -hmm. that uh, there's a young man, Murti Faisal, who is uh, attempting to place that model uh, in Baghdad, and he'll be calling. And as you know, if you've been following the news, the situation there is um, very dangerous, very unsettled. Uh, so we don't know about the connection. <coughs> Technology anyway is very difficult. Uh, and then we'll be finding out what's going on there. So that'll happen at about 3.30, and then we'll continue the discussion. And uh, then uh, after we've discussed for a bit, with our phones out, uh, unless that's uh, Faisal. No, it's not no. <laughs> <laughs> unless it's Faisal. Sorry. That phone can stay on. Yeah, so, uh, and then we'll open the floor. So if you have questions, uh, we'll save them and we'll uh, open the floor at the end. So don't worry, we will get to your questions. So make sure that you remember them and there'll be plenty of chance to discuss also and to have you participate in the discussion. Um, and what I really like about being here, I was thinking about uh, being here generally in English. You say, uh, I am very pleased to welcome our guests. Uh, and since the theme at the same time is both the question of the guest and the host and who is who, uh, I was thinking also in a certain sense to say thank you very much also to our hosts uh, in the sense that uh, Joseph and Mati are the ones who bring us together. The reason we are here is because of their engagement with these issues and their engagement with each other, and that is what enables us to come together. So they are both our guests and our hosts. Um, Joseph uh, Sassoon Sama was born in Baghdad, Iraq, 1948, uh, at the moment of Israel's establishment as a state. His gra grandfather, uh, Hacham, the chief rabbi, Sassoon Kad Kadori, Kaduri. Uh, yeah, I was searching for the right way to say it. Nobody was, knows. <laughs> ah, okay. So Kaduri uh, was the president of Baghdad's Jewish community. He remained <coughs> that even after the great exodus. He remained in Baghdad uh, until uh, his passing in 1971. And he was deeply, deeply committed to uh, tolerance between the different uh, religions and denominations of Iraq. Uh, at the same time, two years later, after his birth, Joseph moved uh, to Israel. Uh, they were uprooted from Iraq. And those of you who uh, know this history know that this was a very, very profound uprooting uh, in all senses of the word. Uh, so that people lost not only uh, their homes, they lost uh, their uh, businesses, they lost their savings, they lost everything pretty much besides the clothes on their back and maybe something like 10 pounds in their pockets. And when they arrived, many of them, like Joseph's family, uh, ended up in camps. Um, and uh, so Joseph then grew up in Israel um, and uh, he went into the army uh, as a young man, uh, found it deeply, deeply traumatizing uh, what happened there also, and then in 1971, right, moved to Europe uh, and left Israel. So a second uprooting, a second leave, leaving behind. Um, so we have Joseph, Baghdadi Jewish, uh, Israeli, European, multiple exiles, multiple uprootings, and also very much an artist in which this takes shape. Uh, one of the projects, uh, one of the most important projects in which it takes shape is the multi-annual project called On Friendship Slash Collateral Damage. Uh, we are now in the third installment, so it's Collateral Damage Three, the third Galut exile, uh, Baghdad, Jerusalem, Amsterdam. 
uh, the guest becomes host. And this is running from September 2019 through January of the coming year, 2020. This is a project uh, that takes place in 36 different locations, which is just amazing to imagine. In those different locations, uh, one of the core elements of what's happening is that Joseph is installing models of uh, buildings, of mosques, of temples, of churches. Uh, here in the Anne Frank House, one such model uh, has been just emplaced just today. Um, and that's a model uh, in wood of the Anne Frank House uh, that, can I actually say where it is? Because I know yes, it's important yes, it's that no, it's okay. No so it's in a, well, it's, a I, I was, it's in secret, a hidden, yeah. yeah, so in a hidden but public location, uh, which is right in the office of the director of the Anne Frank House. Um, other locations include, I know, for example, uh, the mosque on the Rose Gracht, very close to here, a few blocks away, um, the Jewish Museum, um, and yeah, I don't know if you want to add a few more here in Amsterdam. Um, uh, yeah. Goethe Hermitage. Institute, uh, Hermitage, Hermitage uh, uh, yeah. bicycle uh, shop, uh, yeah. our garage. Yeah. Freimetzlerei <laughs> yeah. Lodge. Yeah. 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 Um, I forgot. <laughs> so 36. Buki Buki uh, artist, uh, embassy of the free mind. Um, Faith Moske, we said Hilton Hotel, Anna Frank House, Amsterdam Museum, Architect Bureau Jova, uh, Kunst uh, Institute, Arti and um, and so forth. Yeah. The chess, chess uh, and go <coughs> shop, Jotz Historische Museum, Jotz Liberal Gemeente House, and one yes. secret location. And one secret location. And there's also locations uh, in uh, Ge uh, Germany, uh, also right now uh, in Jerusalem, at the Biennale, um, and as I told you, in Baghdad, uh, of another location. So very, this is not only um, a connection through the personal history of Joseph, not only a connection through the symbolism, the memories, uh, the meaning of the art, but also a very physical emplacement uh, that connects these different locations to each other in a very profound <coughs> project. Um, in the course of it, uh, Joseph Sassoon Sama has revealed his full name, and that being Joseph Sassoon Sama, the Babylonian Jew of the third exile, Galut. To my right is uh, Mati Shmulov, who was born in 1972. 24 years after Joseph, he was born in Haifa to a mother uh, who herself was a Babylonian Jew mm -hmm. uh, and with whom you have a very strong uh, relationship that has shaped you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, like Joseph, he is an artist, uh, but an artist with words, right? A poet, a writer, an essayist, an mm -hmm. editor. Uh, you graduated with honors from Haifa <coughs> University. As an undergraduate, you got your degree uh, in film studies. You got an MA in uh, history or historical yeah. studies. Um, and you have published, to date, yeah. seven books of poetry. Uh, and the last of these, I want to show it to you because I really love how it looks. The last of these is Bachtat. Haifa, Berlin. Uh, you see it written in Latin script, you see it written in Hebrew, right? And then on the book, you, on the back of the book, you see it written mm. in Arabic, uh, published in 2019 in Germany. It is also it just happens to be for sale after the event. So I think in the back of the room for 15 euro, you can also have a look at it, consider if you want to purchase it. Um, and this is a bilingual, oh, and uh, right now you're working, right, uh, on a bilingual edition of your first book of essays, yeah. um, which are entitled, if I have it right, An Eruption from the East, Revisiting the Emergence of the Mizrahi Artistic Explosion and its Imprint on the Israeli Cultural Narrative, mm -hmm. 2006 to 2019. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a wonderful title. And yes. And it it includes the, the article, I, uh, the interview article that I wrote about the work of Joseph Joseph. Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. 
Yeah, because those of you, if you listen to our uh, conversation today, there's this really, really nice uh, interview. Um, and Joseph uh, has, a, a, has a disinclination, I think, to give interviews, particularly right, for artistic journals. So this was the first one in an artistic journal. Um, and it's very, very nice because it includes both sort of interpretations of the work, presentations of it, and then the discussion. Uh, and we'll be touching on a number of the issues, and then at the same time, here's a more in-depth uh, interview on those. Um, so we have here two artists uh, who have, uh, who are both of Baghdadi Jewish descent, uh, of in exile, as it were, within Israel, again in exile within Europe, because that's the final point, is that Mati lives now, I think, in Berlin full time, um, is married to a, a German wife, non-Jewish German yeah. wife. Um, so we have multiple exiles. And so, and one of the core questions, uh, particularly I think where I want to start with, is that experience of being a Babylonian Jew in Israel. And on the one hand, right, it was meant to be a place that would <coughs> offer safety. You go in flight uh, from Iraq to Israel. And then at the same time, though, the erasure part of what you lose is not only the economic and the physical and the social, uh, but also the deep, profound heritage and culture of Babylonian Jewry, because that is not part of the narrative of Israel. Right, so there's a, there's a phrase in here about that you're meant to take a different origin. Your origin becomes uh, the Holocaust, becomes European anti-Semitism, rather than the very rich culture and the very rich history of uh, Babylonian Jewry. I have a very simple question, just to start, is when did you first become aware? Do you remember the moment when you realized, wait a second, I'm a different kind of Israeli? I'm an Israeli who has this Baghdadi Jewish heritage that somehow makes me different. Do you have a sense? Let me start with Joseph. With me? Yeah. When did you first realize this? <laughs> huh? yeah. Oh. <laughs> One, two. <clears throat> well, it's usually difficult to answer such a question, but I guess it started in 1986. And it's actually evolved to this radical exchange of Joseph Tzemach to Joseph Sassoon Tzemach was because of the collaboration in the, the good sense of the world with Linda. And since then, so it's... Uh, so your awareness came as an adult, a full adult. Oh, yes, yes, of course, Israel, of course, of course. As opposed to in Israel. Of course. In okay. Israel, uh, we were really... Uh, all our culture and names and language and, and music and uh, body language erased by the um, so-called uh, Zionist movement, also mm -hmm. in a positive sense. Okay, so that you also internalize the erasure. Sure. Yeah. We were not aware of it, even. Yeah. Yeah. And how about for you? Um, well, the, my, um, my mother language is Iraqi. Yeah. But uh, she couldn't... Um, the, the, the idea of the melting pot in Israel um, um, for, forced her in the, in the more ideological way, not... There was no cough in the house, but forced her to... Uh, to speak with me only Hebrew, so yeah. I would be a Hebrew person, and uh, in that sense, um, I never learned to uh, speak Iraqi. Mm. So the, this uh, language you always um, kept the dialect of the Iraqi Jews and the Iraqi language and other uh, um, phrases uh, erased in a way. Uh, and so I have a mother language which I don't know, and it's uh, it says it's all, I think. And when, what got you thinking about that? Well, my mother speaks with my uh, grandmother still Iraqi. Yeah. So yeah. you, uh, in the house, you hear the Iraqi uh, language, but it's so far away from all of the um, institutes and all of the places where knowledge and uh, create, the school, the university, mm -hmm. the radio, the... And did it ever become a problem to you that you said to your mother, why didn't you teach me Iraqi? 
Well, it's not a liberal question, I think. Uh, you, you accept the, uh, the, so, the social and the family structure until you are, you are going to university and you learn that it's a construct that, sh that could, this, uh, what looks to you so uh, imminent can ch could have changed. Okay, so for you going to university was the moment in which you started thinking, right? So for Joseph it was being abroad, yeah. internationally, within Europe. For you it happened in Israel when you were at university. Yeah, but yeah. just to say, it's a real contextualization because I had the feeling all of the time that I'm the other. But it's only when you go to university you can, you can phrase it, you can give it a meaning and, uh, and, and frame it. Was that when you were growing up? Did you have that feeling of being another? No. No. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, I, I actually never met uh, uh, the so-called my family, the yeah. Babylonian Jewish family. You know, uh, I knew of their existence. Right. Actually, the first time I met them was when I, it was in uh, Yom uh, Kippur War, mm -hmm. as a mm -hmm. reserve, then I met them the first time. Actually, it's the first time I really understood that there is also poverty in Israel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were not aware of it. Uh, mm -hmm. We, the so-called uh, uh, Tel Avivian, the, mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a country within a country, the people who used to live in uh, Tel Aviv. Actually, I mean, I don't regret it or regret it. I never had a, a girlfriend from Babylonian mm -hmm. <laughs> Jewish uh -huh. family. It's usually where, you know, all, all my friends were uh, Ashkenazi, Ashkenazi yeah. Uh, yeah. Jews. Huh? So <coughs> then you have these and, two and, very... Uh, yeah. And they are really, at, at the moment, they are quite confused with uh, what is happening with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is true, huh? Your former girlfriends or your family? No, 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 my, my mm. friends. Your friends. My friends, your friends, because most of them are Ashkenazi Jews. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. Yes, Muti. Yes? Yeah. Can you... Can you tell us uh, how is the situation in Baghdad today? Okay, so the internet is very slow, and there's bridges uh, out, uh, three bridges. Yeah, people are going, but uh, okay. uh, the past week, uh, the, the, the shooting of, of canisters, and this is less by the, by the forces, by the The forces. shooting during the okay, last week Okay, uh, we want to translate it first into Dutch, one second. Yeah. Into Dutch or just the microphone? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the shooting uh, during the last week has been less. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, sorry, I translated from English to Czech, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Okay, okay. And uh, uh, more than 10,000 people have been there. More than 10,000 people have what? Revolting in the city. Yeah, more than 10,000 people are revolting. Uh, the uh, protests have been in October and November. And uh, are, you make, are, are you trying to make a documentary of the situation? So he's a documentary maker, and he and a group of friends are and documenting what's going on and are trying to preserve it so it's documented for history. 
And uh, we would also like to uh, ask you if we can still uh, build Makom in Makom in uh, Baghdad. Yeah, I'm doing my best. Uh, He's doing his best. The shops are uh, so closed. Uh, many shops, are, many areas are closed. But the shops in uh, many areas are closed. It's hard to get the stuff. Sure. But I'll do my best for sure. But of course, we we still have time in uh, the month of uh, December. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he, it's hard yeah, to get the stuff. But he's very much doing his best. Okay, do you want to say the last uh, message uh, to us here before we uh, finish the conversation? Uh, okay, thank you guys for listening to me. And I hope I will one day, soon, not one day, yeah. I'll be live there. Okay. Okay, Muti, take care of Baghdad. We love you. Yeah, I love you too. Bye bye. People are clapping. Uh, people are clapping hands. <laughs> so he said, uh, See you thank soon. You. Bye bye. He said, Thank you very much. Uh, and he said that they're trying to do something for previous generations, for this generation, and for the next generation and particularly importantly to build bridges uh, and to build bridges especially for the people um, connected to Iraq who cannot see their country, he said, who cannot see their country for stupid reasons, um, including Jewish Iraqis uh, and those who are the original inhabitants of many of these Middle Eastern countries was how he formulated it. And uh, so he's working very, very hard at that. Um, and this project is a no. part of that. Let me only... only, only uh, oh, it's fine. Um, he is from the, uh, uh, the young generation. He is about 30 years of age. And uh, there is a huge group of uh, young Baghdadi, Iraqi, which really take care of, uh, of the uh, heritage of the, of the city, of mm -hmm. the culture, mm -hmm. because they lost everything. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's really part of the organization uh, of the revolution. Do you feel like the art that you're doing, that that makes a contribution to that? Or do you feel more like this is something that you're watching happening? Well, I mean, uh, as, as you know, I was busy the last uh, 40 years to reread the history of art and uh, par, uh, par section in uh, the philosophical treatise which has been written by uh, European Jews, Ashkenazi Jews, and, um, and also, of course, Western. Um, um, I've tried to uh, rewrite the lost, lost text, uh, the lost, um, the lost uh, 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 textual heritage, which I felt, felt uh, that was my task. For instance, mm -hmm. I've analyzed the work of Barney Newman, Malevich, uh, uh, every and each um, iconic work. So that right. was part of my uh, journey till I've realized that uh, the most important part was my heritage, so mm -hmm. my culture. How, how, how it will uh, interfere with the future of art history, I do not know. But now I'm in... Do you think if you then see yourself, like if you return to Baghdad via that route through Europe yeah. and the route of rewriting the history uh, of European art and through that history and that personal history you return to Baghdad, um, 
how does that change your return to Baghdad, that it goes through Europe? In this project, on a friendship uh, between brackets, uh, collateral damage, number three, uh, the third, Galut, uh, Baghdad, Jerusalem, Amsterdam, I have built or created the graveyard. Mm. So there will be 36 uh, architectural models which are based actually on a lost civic architecture in my city, in mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. birthplace, mm -hmm. which is weird <laughs> to show it as an artwork. Yeah. Within the institution which we call museum sphere. So mm -hmm. I, I call it between graveyard and museum sphere. Mm -hmm. How it will change my uh, identity or my behavior or my motoric, my way of speaking, of my belief, I do not know because I'm in the process and it's also a fearful moment. Uh, I think what, what uh, Yosef Sassoon Semach is doing, he uh, is, is doing a diasporic project. So he uh, is based here in Amsterdam, but his uh, whole identity is also uh, going like the names uh, throughout Jerusalem and Baghdad, but through the models he, that he puts here in the what he calls the museum sphere, he replaced himself in the in his narrative because mm -hmm. uh, graveyard is the it's always present, it's never past. Mm -hmm. We look at it as place that we look to the past, but it's always a present place. So he uh, he recreates the city and puts the graveyard here, so he can go and talk with the dead and recreate the, the present in a new kind of form. Mm -hmm. Right, so not only here, well, I mean, yeah. I do not go and talk to the dead. I mean, it's, it's, it's very, uh, I should explain it. For me, the graveyard is mm -hmm. the relationship with the text. Right. Okay. And which that's which a, text, well, if I'm uh, thinking about your audience here? Uh, what, whatever text, my name is, mm. Uh, mm. is a clear text. It used mm -hmm. to be Joseph Tzemach. Now it's mm -hmm. uh, Joseph Sassoon Tzemach, what I, I have mm -hmm. just mentioned uh, earlier, my, my friends in Israel uh, are very confused. They, ca they cannot really follow the... Development. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah uh, development, I don't know, how, but it's, uh, you know, a total change. A transformation. Yeah. A transformation yeah. in a way. Mm -hmm. But for you, you had an understanding of what Joseph... I mean, that was one of the things that really struck me in the interview. How can that be when, so you're a different generation, so this is Joseph's friends, his generation uh, in Israel, they don't understand. You're coming from Israel, you're a different generation, mm. and there's something that resonates. How can um, it be? It's, um, it's a moment that um, all of my uh, artistic and um, I was writing about the, this generation. I looked to the poets of Erez Beaton and yeah. and Amira Hess and Bachasseri and uh, and, and also in the art. I looked to um, yeah, it was easy to me to look at, at his work uh, because it's uh, the the generation before. I'm yeah. I'm a third generation and I, I was not born in Baghdad. I don't speak the language and. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, I don't have a memory, just uh, stories that I heard from my grandmother. And, but um, and when I moved to Berlin, I um, I understood his uh, his experience much more uh, to the point because all these years I looked at um, at the immigration of my uh, my grandmother and grandfather and my mother. And suddenly I was the immigrant. And being right. in the place of an immigrant um, as an Iraqi Jew in Europe, it really resonates to his task. Although, of course, what he did, did and doing it uh, in its larger scales of, uh, uh, um, of, of, yeah, of the spectrum of that he holds up. I mean, I, I don't, I, when he puts the, the, the house in Baghdad, it shows you to, to how far can he get going right. from, from yeah. now. So is Joseph for you, because you say you look to the older generation, is he for you one of the ways you can return to Baghdad? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, uh, I, you know, my grandmother, she used to go to the synagogue where his grandfather was the rabbi, so uh, it's not so far away that the grandson want to go through the grandson into this 
um, uh, synagogue again. And then at the same mm -hmm. time, what do you understand about Joseph's work? And particularly about the aspect that has to do with being in exile? Because when you were saying, I was very interested, you said when you came to Europe, there were things that you understood. Can you put words to that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, um, it, the, we are, I, I wrote it in the article, but I explained it in, in a few sentences. Um, throughout my dialogue with, uh, with his artistic work, I, uh, I realized that uh, we don't have uh, enough uh, words to, to, um, to, to go deeply into this uh, paradox that we are sitting in the heart of Europe, but at the same time we are sitting outside of, of the history of Europe, outside of the, the narrative of, of Holland or Germany, and outside of the narrative of the cities that we are in, so because we are displaced um, from Baghdad and other places to Israel, and then to here, but the, our story is not... When you go to... Um, when they, you ask them about Jews, they always think about Ashkenazi Jews. We are not yeah. in the scope, and the, the, there is a need of really uh, re, um, rereading the whole history in order to uh, get this narrative inside. And I, feel, I, think, I, I think that uh, Joseph's artistic work gives us a, a key to this uh, door, to these walls, to, to open the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, because we have two kinds of erasure, right? So we have the erasure of Mizrahi from Israel and from, say, Jewish public identity, public narration. We have the erasure of Jews from Europe's heritage, Europe's identity. Are these similar kinds of things, of the erasure of a Jewish minority, or are they very different kinds of things, what it is to be erased within the Jewish narrative and to be erased within the European narrative? We, 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 uh, uh, we can only speak about this split between these two um, group of Jews. We have to, re to relate it to the Second World War, to the uh, Holocaust. Because until the Second World War, uh, there were Jews everywhere. Nobody knew exactly if he is uh, Ashkenazi Jews from the West, uh, from Iraq, from Baghdad. Look, uh, Iraq was... Uh, very developed uh, uh, city in the time of uh, King Faisal. <laughs> uh, uh, before there were here um, a private toilet uh, in uh, Baghdad, there were private toilet in the house, there were running water. We are talking about 1920, uh, <coughs> 1900. They were uh, uh, on the uh, top of the civilization or also the last 2,000 years. But then something happened, and that was the Second World War. Mm -hmm. And the um, entire movement since Herzl also and Dreyfus, I don't want to get involved now with, the, with Herzl, also not really a good friend of mine. <laughs> I do not know if he's your friend also not. Mm -hmm. So Herzl, we, they refer to it in Israel, the elite, he is, he is actually our father, because after he uh, was present at the, the trial of uh, Dreyfus, he decided to recreate a homeland for uh, the lost uh, Jewish people. He even thought about Uganda and these type of things. And the power of the, of the Jews who came because of the Second World War, that was one of the stimulants which uh, uh, recreate or reclaim the state of Israel, they were in a total control of the entire shift. So the heavy shift was, we are here because of the Holocaust, the Holocaust is <laughs> our uh, flag, and the Holocaust is actually the fear, the fear of the other, and the other are the West, the Christian, uh, and, and as we said, it, it was a very rational thing. So does that mean that, that you're saying, yeah? If you are in Israel, as an Israeli, if you were born in Baghdad, or you were born in uh, Haifa, or you were born in Afghanistan, or if you were born in, in Amsterdam, they were explaining us day and night, there will never be the second Metzada, which was also false, 
This was a, a, a kind of legend that there was a, a public uh, uh, a suicide of all the Jews. That is about uh, 400 years before the foundation of uh, Kachani, and it was a false. Now we know that uh, there has never been a, a There's public never been suicide. No, no. And they will explain us in every gathering and uh, meeting with the soldiers, never second Metzada. Yeah. Never second Metzada, never second Shoah, and all the time this fear, until today, within the... Uh, right, because does that mean, like, if I, if I would take it very literally, that you're saying that within Israel, they need to rewrite the history uh, that you're taught at school, you need to rewrite the sure, national sure, narrative. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. It's, it's uh, I mean, actually, they never wrote it. So the, the one who can write it, it's actually uh, Mati and Joseph and Ella and all, 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 all um, the third generation, which we are really uh, thankful, mm -hmm. my generation, actually thankful to the third generation because they, are, they, are, they, they lost their fear mm. from the Ashkenazi Jews. Ashkenazi Jews as a symptom to the, in a, in a good sense, the Zionist movement. If there was, what would be, where would you start if you were rewriting the history of Israel mm. as it is taught to Israeli children, like you were? Mm. Well, I, uh, I think in one word, I, uh, the national is it. Yeah? Yeah, so if it's, uh, you don't have to tell the old story of the rebirth of the national movement, mm -hmm. You can open uh, the door to uh, different other narratives, which are not <coughs> obliged to uh, to explain uh, the idea of passports or or, um, or borders. Mm. Mm. Okay, so a borderless Israel. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for instance. Which I uh, think could sound very scary to a lot of people. Um, well, you have to have a vision. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How does your poetry come into that? Is that part of your vision? Yeah, um, so on the cover of the book, uh, the, there is a graffiti that my wife uh, took a picture of in Haifa, it's, and it uh, deals with the hijabic train. There was a train from Haifa to Baghdad. People, do you know it? Who knows about the train from Baghdad to Haifa, to, uh, from Haifa to Baghdad? One, two. So it was a train, uh, it was a colonial train uh, that also brought commerce and, and, and oil from uh, Kirkuk in the north to, uh, to, the, to the port of, uh, of Haifa. But it was also, it was connected also to the Damascus and Beirut. And so the Ottoman times and the British times, they, um, they had a different kind of Middle East when the borders weren't so strict. Uh, for instance, my father uh, went before the, uh, the 48 to uh, Beirut and Damascus and brought us gifts, uh, brought the you know, family gifts that I saw, the knife that he, he bought there. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it, there is a Arabic here about being Damascus, Beirut, and, and Haifa. So my imagination was uh, set in, okay, one sentence, because I promised to be short today. It's the idea that if there was a European Union after all these wars, mm -hmm. there should be a Middle Eastern Union that you can go freely. And I wrote a poem about it in the last poem here. This is my, and I'm doing a festival next, uh, next year in Berlin about it, the <coughs> culture of the Middle Eastern Union. Mm -hmm. Joseph, when you, when you hear that, and if we're thinking about that the theme is exile, do you think this idea, of a borderless Middle East, um, even a borderless world, does that, is that a solution to exile, or is that the full realization? Especially, you know, and I'm thinking here because exile has also been sure. very important for your creativity and for your beauty and for your art. Um, is it the culmination of it, or is it the I do not know if it's a comedy, but for me, uh, I do not call it exile, I call it okay. Galut, and uh, Galut yeah. for me, it's not exile, okay. and it's not diaspora. Yeah. This is a process. Yeah. Uh, this is a process, I mean, I can only uh, be part of his idea of measurement of territory. It's actually, in a poetical sense, that this is, this is a, 
a process of uh, daily measurement, the uh, distance between me and uh, Zion. Okay. The Zion as, as, as a, a clever metaphor which has been uh, created in Galut, in, in the place which is not actually uh, <laughs> exile and uh, diaspora. And it has to do with a, a, a temporary a place where, where the horizon changes every second, in, in a poetical sense, of course. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I was born in Baghdad. I didn't know that I would see today in Amsterdam. In Amsterdam. Yeah. And I will, uh, I will install an uh, architectural model of a lost civic architecture in this city. <coughs> so at, at this mm -hmm. very moment, I've created here a graveyard. So I mean, I mean this, that's why I say we are thankful yeah. to this <laughs> third generation. They come with their but I think stewed if, ideas. Thank you. I think your, your idea, is, uh, it's, it's, a, it's so theological because you never... You're dealing with modernity, but still you are very much uh, looking for the theological sense, and it's connected to your grandfather. And I told you that before, and also you, um, and all the idea of, uh, for instance, the idea of, of this, um, from the start, uh, um, how did you do the Eretz Israel, the Zion, uh, as a carpet, and a missing carpet, and I think... Oh, two seconds, yeah, yeah because there's, there's an mm. artwork. Yeah, you cannot see it. Yeah, yeah, so an artwork that Joseph made in which you have um, a carpet, a, a Middle Eastern carpet. It's, it's a Middle Eastern um, carpet from a, a mosque, actually, yeah. where I painted in it in the white, uh, white paint the, the territory of the State of Israel before the Sixth Day uh, War. Before the Sixth So the territory of Israel in white... So a blank page, as it were, yeah. against the carpet of a Middle Eastern, yeah, a Middle Eastern carpet from a mosque. So the blankness of Israel, yeah. So that yeah, was I think for my generation, it's a, uh, it's harder to um, there is a, it it, took, it was harder to us to keep this theological kind of uh, dialogue. We had to reconstruct it, and I think for him it's much more easy. <laughs> Although he's not a practiced Jew, as uh, he's right, you're not, yeah, but. Nevertheless, his work is very intense in that dialogue. He had a work about the Babylonian uh, Talmud, and which was uh, yeah. which was banned in the still. No, it's still banned in Israel. <laughs> so pages from the Talmud yeah. that Joseph paints yeah. with black paint, with white lines, yeah. right? That are the entrances and exits into yeah. the Talmud. Uh, and there are a number of key museum directors who very angrily, I think, have refused to show this. Actually, all of right? them. All of them. All of okay, them. all of them. Yeah, I was struck when I uh, learned about the history of, uh, of his art in Israel. On the one hand, he had a recognition from people like uh, um, um, Nomi Shapira, right? Uh, I said the name right? Eti Shapira. Uh, yeah. hey, Sarit Shapira. Sarit Shapira and uh, Gidon of Rat. Yeah. On, this, on the other time, on the, the other end, he, uh, he was rejected really fearfully and aggressively um, from Moti Omer. He was uh, the later, if not with us today, but he was the later head of the Museum of Tel Aviv and, uh, and, or, and also by others. And it's, for me, when I heard the story, then I looked. I, I looked for the how it, I googled it. I, I looked for somebody who wrote it, to, to write who wrote about it, and it was not there. And that was one of my tasks as a writer about art. To uh, I said, why it's not there? And then when I talked with the magazine that I want to write to, I said to them, listen, it's, look at all these like um, um, road maps that he, he went through, and still nobody get, uh, took it into one article. And, and, and show that he was in all this. Who um, it's Matin? Who? It's Matin. Uh, crossword. You know, this crossword of right. uh, of history, so Israeli mm -hmm. history, mm -hmm. and it's not all, only the, the history of of, uh, of the, uh, the, the not only uh, um, uh, Israeli art, uh, because it's also at the same time is belonging to here, mm -hmm. to the Amsterdam, uh, the, the history of art, and to Netherlands, and in that sense to Europe. Mm -hmm. So his art is uh, standing on his bridges between uh, these two cultures, the Middle Eastern, Asiatic, uh, Israeli uh, art, and 
European art. Right, and I think that's important, that in the process of creating these bridges within your art, you've also touched on very sensitive yeah. kinds of things. Only How one, is just, that? just yeah. to, one of the reasons were that I, my family was not an Ashkenazi family, so I could not uh, begin my journey with saying uh, my grandmother was in in Auschwitz. Yeah. I could only say my grand my grandmother was in Baghdad, mm -hmm. and uh, that was a failure on my part. So you start in a different place, you go yeah. through a different route, you build bridges that are meant to not be built, yeah. maybe. Um, what is that like for you, that there is that kind of an erasure within Israel? Yeah. Is that painful or is it a legitimation? You know then that you're talking about something yeah. very real? Um, it, or do you take it personally or both? Of course, it's very, yeah. very painful. It's okay. like, uh, uh, you know, in Hebrew, I mean, ke'ev, ke'av, it's like the pain of my father when he came to Israel. They, they, did, not re they did not recognize, it's the same word in Hebrew, ke'ev, pain, like a father. Ah, uh, pain, it means ke'ev, and ke'av, it's the same letters, it means like the father. So, my father was a very famous lawyer in Israel. He was the Yuridish advisor of the Iraqi army when he was 33 years of age. When he came to Israel, the elite, they told him, look, we don't accept your uh, papers, you have to restudy. And he did it, he studied again. Mm. Four years to become a lawyer. Mm. So he was always offended. Mm. So this, this, this pain stayed. Are you telling the story with your art as much of your father as of yourself? Well, in, in a way, he's my father. Mm. Um, There are many things uh, which I did not understand then. You know, when my mother, I mean, as a child, when my mother used to make uh, errors or mistakes in Hebrew, I, uh, I used to be angry. And today, look, my Dutch is not really brilliant as her uh, Hebrew then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and all her memory was sitting in Tel Aviv, and she dreams about her uh, small house in uh, Baghdad, which was, in a way, uh, a critical moment for us in the state of Israel. Um, well, anyhow, I've, 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 I've added into my name the entire history, so now everybody in Israel knows that it's Joseph Sasson Zema. Sasson, it is always connected to the Babylonian Jews. So only the Babylonian Jews will call themselves Sasson. Mm. So I don't need to elaborate on this narrative that I'm a Babylonian Jew in, in this sense. And uh, how the project will develop, I, I, I do not know. I mean, we just talked today to a, a young uh, a citizen in the city of Baghdad. I mean, it's, for me, it's really, it's really painful lately huh, to hear that uh, the demolition of the city, this, this is my... my uh, Birthplace. Mm -hmm. It's weird. I mean, it's almost a surrealist uh, theme, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. epistemic void, totally. Yeah, that it's uh, how I, how it will develop. I don't know. That's why I called my journey uh, the third third galut. So mm -hmm. it's not really an exile. It's a process of building and rebuilding and duplicating the um, authentic place, which actually do not exist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and if we shift. Um, from, from Israel to Europe. And we think about your role here. Um, what is it that, because we've been talking about how do you tell the history of Israel, we've been talking about the erasure within Israel, um, about the destruction of Baghdad. If we shift to Europe, 
and we think about your emplacement here and the ways in which you're engaging because you are here. On the one hand, it lets you engage your history at home, but it also lets you engage your life, right? What is it um, as Mizrahi, Israeli, Baghdadi Jews, do you see? How do you contribute to the building of Europe? Um, well, uh, I think Europe is not uh, complete without uh, our narrative and uh, uh, all the aspects of it. All the, so um, it will be a monoculture if it uh, only thinks about Jews like Eretzel or Ben Gurion or Bibi Netanyahu uh, or or I don't know in the art scene uh, Kaddishman or whatever. You have to open the doors and see that. Uh, the story of Israel is uh, the story of the, the Jewish story is multi-cultural uh, and multi-ethnical. And Maybe there's examples from Berlin. Are there examples that you can think of, um, either that you're involved in mm. or that you know about, that yeah. show how this is happening? Yeah, I've, um, I'm part of a literary group called uh, We Are Anachnu um, Anu Nachna. And it's uh, Arab, Arabs and Jews together reading po poetry and, and stories. Um, we did an event uh, two years ago in, in Berlin in the uh, Literatarisch Collegium, and uh, we connected to the Middle East. And this year we did uh, an event in the Dresden Jüdische Woche in the Dresden Film um, Jewish, uh, uh, um, Jewish, Jewish Festival. Media, yeah. And next year we're going to do what I told you about the cultural the culture of the now Eastern Union or the culture of the Middle Eastern Union, when we did people passports and of different uh, of the Middle Eastern Union, like the European Union, and they go to different rooms. There will be a room for Baghdad and and, uh, and Tehran and uh, and Tel Aviv and others and Jerusalem and Damascus and so forth. And so and we will make a. Uh, Jews will, will, create, will create with Arabs together. So uh, we, we are using Berlin as a laboratory because um, we can meet Iranian Jews or Iraqi Jews or Syrian Jews and with the uh, Syrian and Iraqi and Iranian people and create art together, which is a, a deeper sense of, uh, of engaging with reality. And I'd like to say, by the way, if you want to start asking questions, I'll be looking around. So uh, because we're just getting, we've got about half an hour. So just say last yeah. word. I think uh, how it connects to, uh, to to its project. I feel we, our body, um, especially the, the the holy body of, of Judaism, was uh, entangled with the with the Arabic culture. People were even praying to God in the makam, in the musical Arab uh, quarter tones. And so in our body we have both the, the Jewish and the Arabic bodies going together and you cannot uh, take one from each other. So I think it's, it's also in this work at the same time that he is a, is a very Jewish, he's doing the synagogue, but still he's going to the Muslim and talk with him about quick creating it there. So it's always this hybridic movement also. Yeah. Only, only yeah. one thing, I, I was, I, I when I uh, moved to the West, I didn't deal with my Jewishness. The, the, uh, the support team which I had uh, next to me was my mother tongue, which is not my mother tongue, and it's not the mother tongue of my son, uh, the Hebrew. So, uh, because my mother tongue was Hebrew, I could have analyzed and uh, replant uh, all the information which the West uh, did not like to have. Uh, for instance, uh, the black square of uh, Malevich, which has to do with the black and white, the memory of destruction of the temple, the second temple, and so forth. Um, so uh, around me, everybody thought that I'm dealing with my Jewishness. Mm -hmm. But it was not true until now. Mm -hmm. I'm still do not uh, dealing with my Jewishness like he is suggesting and many, many other, but uh, the source of my, of my uh, search is the Hebrew language. But it was a very theological process because yeah, sure. you were rereading the Imperium of the, 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 the Western Imperium 
uh, and deconstructing it to yeah. de with Judaism. And, and I think if your grandfather, as a rabbi, uh, was rewriting uh, different halacha uh, rules through rereading the uh, the Ben Shcha and other rabbis, but like they did, all the big rabbis were also recreating the interpretation of the past. So I think when you did it yourself, maybe without knowing that you're going to mm -hmm. recreate yourself as a uh, Yitzhak uh, a Joseph yeah. Sasson Tzemach, and, and so I think it's, it's also, you, it's a very, very much a, a Jewish, Arabic Jewish kind of practice without yeah. knowing. Sipu or Yereach. Shivim minim shil tmarim ayu bebaktad, sipa li sabati, vosifa, חבל שעזרנו, שם לא היו צמים תרופות באוכל, שם לא היו חממה, שם לא היינו, שם לא היינו אוכלים פרה, והקובות היו מלאות בבשר כבש. וגם אם דרכי לבגדד נהרסה, ולמרות שאינני דובר את השפה, עכשיו אני יודע שחיי הם חתיכת חשיכה של ההיסטוריה, התלויה על וף סיפור אור ירח של סבתי. Mondlichtgeschichte. 70 Dackelsorten gab es in Bagdad, erzählte mir meine Oma und fügte hinzu, schade, dass wir von dort weggegangen sind. Dort gäbe man keine Medizin ins Essen. Dort gäbe es keine Gewächshäuser. Dort würden wir kein Rind essen. Die Fleischbällchen, die wären vom Schaf. Ist auch mein Weg von Bagdad zerstört? kann ich auch die Sprache nicht sprechen, weiß ich jetzt zumindest, dass mein Leben ein ziemlich dunkles Stück Geschichte ist, mit einem Haken, an dem sie hängt, meiner Oma Mondlichtgeschichte. Mhm. Mhm.